Next up, he's a native of Lafayette. He started Karen Crow High School in the old Crow Dome. He led the Bears to a state championship, went on to play at LSU. He earned first team All American honors and remains the all time leading rusher in Tigers history. 4,557 yards, also the all time leader in LSU history in rushing touchdowns with 46. He scored 50 touchdowns total at LSU, then went on to play 13 years in the NFL, all with the New England Patriots where he was part of three Super Bowl championship teams. He's a member of the Patriots Hall of Fame, the College Football Hall of Fame, the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame, and of course, he's a legend at LSU, a legend in our minds, and never forgotten by anyone. We always are happy to have him grace us with his presence. Of course, the Tigers, we don't want to talk about that right now, it's okay, so they have a bye week, how's that? We'll talk about that. And then that next game against Alabama, and that's one that's gonna be in prime time as well on WGNO coming up on November 9th. Please give a very warm welcome to LSU Tiger legend, Kevin Falk. Kevin. Thanks, Ken, appreciate it. Well, that, that's actually my job, Ken, come up here and talk about LSU, no matter what, if we winning, we losing, that, that's just the job. Uh, before I get started, I'd like to say congratulations to both of you for coming back home. Um, I've been away for, 10 plus years before, and I understand when you come back home what that means, especially be around family. Uh, but kind of piggyback off of Bryce a little bit about expectations. Uh, expectations as an LSU Tiger, it, it doesn't matter if you got questions going on during the beginning of the season, during the offseason. The expectations will always be high. Uh, and I think this year there were questions on both sides of the ball to start, to start the season especially defense because there was a new defensive leader in Blake Baker. Um, first couple of games, I think we was shaky a little bit, especially as a fan base. But like I said, those expectations were high and always going to be high. Um, I think one turnaround point, one game early on in the season that really turned it around was that South Alabama game. And I was telling people that they were like, Kevin, South Alabama, we playing. Like, yeah, I get it. I understand. But when you're working with a new defensive coordinator, new terminology, and guys trying to figure it all out, that means a whole lot. But for me, that South Alabama game was an important game because you were going to get some of the same type of routes, some of the same type of formations that the old Miss Rebels were going to run against LSU the, week, the, next, the following week, and that was a big test. I think one of the, the brightest spots on LSU's football team right now is the defensive line, which in my eyes, I thought it was going to be one of those that was going to be, be a building year for those guys. But those younger guys really have been stepping it up, especially on the edges with uh, Swanson. Um, I don't know where he came from, but I, I like him on that, on that side of the ball. Uh, but they are really playing their butt off, and I think it's a credit to uh, Coach Bo and what, he's, what he means and what they mean to him as well. Um, Whit Weeks, wow. Um, what a year he's having right now as a linebacker. Um, with Harrow out, um, he's really has stepped in and played that role as that, that leader in the linebacker position. Even though we knew that the end of last year when Nuss Meyer came in and you know threw for a bunch of yards in the bowl game, there still was questions. And I think those questions were answered during the first few games of the season offensively. But I think it kind of slid a little bit as far as offensively. And I think that's because we've been mixing and matching a little bit with our offensive line and the a little, uh, not the tackles, but the inside part of our offensive line that, that's been kind of shaky and it's kind of been, you know, been showing and very visible. So last, we put ourselves in a position uh, last week in the Texas a and game to win the football game, uh, especially in the second half. Um, but sometimes the other teams coach too. And I think he did, that coach did a wonderful job of changing quarterbacks at the time he did. Um, Bryce been coaching for a very long time. To do something in the middle of a game, you understood something. You knew what you had in that quarterback and what that was going to mean to your football team. And then listening to the commentators, Herb Street, talk about how the offensive coordinator, that's the background he came from. Um, running that type of offense, zone reads with the quarterback, so he was just licking his chops and ready for us. But we put ourselves in a position to still come out and win the last four games of the season. Um, first one was our rival, the biggest rival that we had, Alabama. Um, come out there and play, 
play tough. It's a winnable game, but it's going to be a tough game to win. Then we got Florida, uh, who ain't been playing great, but we haven't either. So it should be another tough game. It's an SEC game. Then we got Vanderbilt, which we feel like we can beat Vanderbilt, but any, any given Saturday, anything can happen. And then Oklahoma comes to Tiger Stadium, uh, like, which should be an exciting game. First time playing Oklahoma, really, in Tiger Stadium. So it should be interesting, but I think that we have the opportunity to make it to a bowl game, and even further, if we continue to grow as a football team. Those wins and those losses that we had this year might not have been the prettiest thing, but sometimes you want to uh, discuss some of your negativities with a win, with a good win. So thank, me, thank you again for having me. Always a pleasure being here. Uh, can't wait for next year.